Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to take you through to just how to make a quick little trigger utilizing a trigger box. So if you recall previously, we had started talking about from the basic actors here, utilizing this box trigger element here. Now, a couple of things to point out here is this is going to be controlled through a blueprint element here for working with and laying out. This way you can use it multiple times in your level if you so choose. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and make a new blueprint class. Now, this is considered, the box trigger is considered an actor. So we're going to start with an actor based blueprint. So I'm going to go ahead here and I am going to place the blueprint just right in this third person element here in this third person folder. I'm going to call this BP. Let's call it light trigger. Call it okay. All right. So as far as the development of our, tr our trigger here, we're going to need two items. Within the default scene root, Again, this is the root component. This is actually what you're seeing inside here as far as your viewport right now. Remember, the circle is more of a reference. User cannot see this when you're actually in game. With this, understand that if we are to place a trigger in here, what's going to actually happen is the trigger will not be viewable to the user or when you test the game. That may be what you want. If you want to, though, you can add a solid object like a box or a sphere or something like that just so you can find it in your level. You can delete this later. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead up to the components area and making sure that that default scene root is selected. I'm going to add component and I'm going to go ahead and come down and locate box collision. Now I'm going to pull this up a little bit as far as my grid is concerned. I'm also going to make it a little bit larger here just so that I'm not running all over trying to find it. I'm then going to come back, select the default scene route again, and let's go ahead and add a point light. Now a couple of things with this point light here. Remember that you can come in and you can change this at a later point if you need to. I'm going to pull it up here a little bit but just so that I can actually see it. I am going to increase my tens intensity. I'm also going to change the color here. Let's make it a nice bright green. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is under the variable name, I'm going to call this point light. You might in the future want to give it a bit more of a descriptive variable name, but for right now, just because we're only working with one, I'll leave it at point light. Now, the goal of this trigger here, what I would like to see happen whenever I go into the event graph, is the light will be turned off by default. And when the player actually walks into this trigger area, the light will turn on. Likewise, when the player walks out of the trigger area, the light will turn off. So actually, by default here, you still have one more step you have to take care of before you can even go into your event graph. Over on the details here for the rendering, by default, we have visibility of the light turned on and set to true. Let's go ahead and turn that off. That way then, whenever the game loads, the light won't actually be turned on. At this point, I can save and I can compile. So as far as just building and placing the components into the default scene route, everything is good to go. So let's come on over to the event graph here. Now, we actually do not need any of these. We do not want the overlap. We do not want it ticking every time in the level. What we want is for the box here is over in the events under details, you're going to see a lot of different options here. The two primary event components that you're going to be working with is on component begin overlap and on component end overlap. So if we go ahead here, Let's start off with our on component begin overlap. One thing to point out to everybody here is notice how in the parentheses here, you are getting a reference of what it is referring to. In our case, it's referencing the component box in the level. The big thing that we wanted to do is turn on the point light. 
So we're going to go ahead and set visibility. Now, friendly reminder here, let me actually deselect that. I'm clicking on the execution arrow, and I'm just clicking, dragging, and letting go. Unreal is going to need an executable action. So I'm going to say set visibility. Now, one nice thing in newer versions of Unreal, in previous versions, we had to set the visibility and then set the variable that it was referring to. However, now in newer versions of Unreal with the blueprints, what you can actually do here is if you look down a little further here, you should see the other components that are also in your root here. You can even refer to the root itself. Because we're working with point light, I'm actually going to come down here and select the Select Visibility Point Light. Now, as you can see, it's made a function to set the visibility. And what is the target? Well, the target is our point light. And if I actually click on the variable element here, you can see up in my details panel, you see how it actually points to the variable name point light that actually refers to the component that we built up in the scene root. The only thing that we need to change here is the new visibility. The new visibility is a Boolean value inside this function here that is asking, can you or can you not see point light for your target? We want it to be checked or true. You could actually compile and save your blueprint at this point if you like. And let's go ahead and actually drag and drop our blueprint into the level here. So I'm going to go ahead and play. Now here, this is what I was talking about earlier. <clears throat> As you can see, notice that I can't actually see the blueprint reference here. So it's actually, you know, kind of a game here as far as finding it. But whoop, so you see here, my character has now walked into the trigger area. There you see that green light shining down on me. But notice if I run out, you see how the green light still stays on. This is an example as far as just programming in general, but also blueprints. Unreal did exactly what you told it to do. We only told it in the blueprint here. Let me double click and bring back the blueprint. We only told it what to do when your component or your player began the overlap on the trigger box. We said nothing about when the player left the trigger box. So that means if we come back over to your components here, we set an on component begin overlap. We now need to set an on component end overlap. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus symbol next to the events here to get that coming out here. Now, a few things to point out here. We actually need to set up, as far as the end overlap, I am going to set up a branch option here. A branch is a flow control in, bl in Blueprints, but really, if you notice here, if a condition is true, execute goes to true, otherwise it goes to false. In programming, this is your Boolean. This is your if-else statement. So if something ha is true, do this, else, do the false. So now that I have the branch in place, what I'm actually going to do is right-click on the Boolean and promote it to a variable. So this is going to be my condition. Now, one thing I strongly encourage students to do whenever you're working with a condition, it's going to be kind of like default terminology. So they're just going to call it condition here. I would come up to the details and under the variable name, you know, is the light on? Yes. Because the user is overlapping, the light would be true. So if I break off here, I'm going to set another visibility. Now, a couple of things here, actually. I'm going to set visibility for point light. This is up to you. You could technically leave this variable here. From a cleaning up standpoint, though, I'm actually going to highlight this and delete it. I'm going to take the point light variable from the visibility up here 
and instead I'm going to make a second connector that it's pointing to the same point light there. And then I want to make sure that new visibility does not have a check mark next to it, so it's false. So now if I compile and save, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize this a little bit. I'd like you to still be able to see what's going on in your event graph here. So if I simulate this, so I go ahead. This is kind of a nice little element here. You can see that it kind of feeds and shows you how the blueprint is running. And now if I run out, you can see down at the bottom there, you could see how the light turns off. So there it is running again. It's firing for the on begin overlap. When I walk out of the box, you can see how it fires at the end there. So that's working with the trigger box and having it affect as far as just visibility of an element inside of your game. It doesn't have to be a light. It can also be things like other actors. It can be static meshes and so on and so forth.